Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler. Over the last few years, I've been focusing my attention on Les Filles du Roi, the King's Daughters, and then I started in 2023, Les Filles the marriageable girls who came before. So I wanted to really explore these amazing women. Today we're on episode 88, so we've come a long way. There are about 262 of these ladies, and I plan on doing all of them. So stay with me. Stay tuned. As they then let me show you ways you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. Subscribe, like, and notify. The next three are ways to help the channel grow. Coffee and Patreon are external platforms. And then on my my website, Have Roots Will Travel, there's a PayPal button, and you can use that as well. And while you, if you happen to be on there, make sure you look at the index to see who I've done and who I haven't done. And let me know if there's someone that you're dying for me to, to look at. I really appreciate all of the uh, suggestions. Really, truly, it helps kind of guide me. So thank you so much. So let's get started and get to know our Fille Marie of this episode. Before we begin, let's have a look at Les Fille Marie. These were women who came between 1634 and 1662 to New France. They are the marriageable girls. These ladies did not come in groups. They came one at a time, maybe a few. They did not have a sponsorship. They did not have any gifts from the government or anything like that. Their passages were usually paid by a church or a, you know some sort of organization. But generally speaking, they took you know, their life in their hands, so to speak, and said, you know what, I'm going to try my hand at a, at a new life. And in 1634, as many of you know, this was the beginning of the second stage of Quebec or New France. And it, there was nothing there. It was a barren, very, very small settlement. So the ladies, particularly those that came be, before, you know, 1655, now we turn our attention to episode 88, Marguerite Goulet. Now, she is not a viewer request. She is a request by me. I realized that she is one of my Fia Marie, and I thought, oh, let's have a look at Marguerite and see what she's all about. Now, Marguerite was born in 1627 in a commune called saint martin du vieux her parents were Vincent Gaulet and Marie Bonnard. Now, Saint Martin du Vieux Benin is from the Normandy region, and inside of that region we have the Orne département. Her church, Saint Martin, dates from the 15th century, so we presume that that is where she is baptized. Now, we have Pierre and Francois, two of her brothers, would also emigrate to New France. We have Pierre, who is her twin brother who would emigrate in 1657 and would marry a fille du roi, Jacqueline Lauvernat. Her younger brother, François, would arrive a few years before her and would marry a fellow fille mariée, Marie Rocheron, who we have not profiled. Now, the reason there's a question mark next to Jean is we believe that this is part of the same family, but we are not 100% sure. He did not, he came to New France, but he did not leave any descendants, and he never married. He was, but he he lived until I think the age of 72 or something. So that is the family. So that's kind of an interesting mass immigration, if you will. So very very interesting dynamic there. She would arrive in New France in 1654. Let's see who she marries groom that she would select and who would select her, his name, Jacques Crête. He was born in 1626 in Tourot, France. His parents were Antoine Crête and Jeanne Le Grand. In the three decades starting in 1632, a large proportion of immigrants to New France came from Perchy in what has been called the Percheron Immigration Movement. Many Percherons were thus recruited to work in seigneuries being established along the St. Lawrence River. Valley. The Beaupart Seigneurie, New France's first agricultural oriented 
seigneury was granted in 1634 to Robert Kifar by the company of 100 associates. While the total number of immigrants was small, Perche had a much higher rate of immigration to New France than most other regions of France. Nearly all French Canadians have some ancestors from the villages of Perche. Prominent last names from Perche who came to Canada starting just before the end of Samuel de Champlain's tenure include Côté, Boucher, Cloutier, Dion, Tremblay, Perezzi, and yes, our very own Crête. So there's so many names here, and this actually is in the church of at uh, Tourov. So it is, he really was a son of this region. So Jean would come to New France as um, an engagé, which meant a contracted worker. He worked for three years in Trois-Rivières, actually, from 1649 to about 1653. By 1654, he was able to purchase a piece of land in Beaupar, and that was to prepare for the future. And so obviously that was very important when you were going to be married. So he would establish himself at Beaupar. Later on in life, he would also purchase other land but for right now, he was getting ready to get married. On September 13, 1654, Marguerite married Jacques Rennes in the chapel of the Signora Manor of Beaubois, which would have been Robert Givals. I mean, ultimately, the act was recorded in Quebec City as well. Now, let's have a look at where they settled. So because they would settle here from 1654 on, obviously they were true pioneers. Robert Giffard was their seigneur, but they were also very, very important people. 1666, we find Jean Crête, Marguerite, Louis, Marie, Marguerite, François, Jean, and Pierre. Pierre is a domestic engagé. And then we have the 1667 census with Jean, Marguerite, and remember, Gosselin, again, we have to understand that they made mistakes or they were additions or they heard it wrong. You have to kind of have a big tent in terms of understanding because we've gone with the assumption that her name was Goulet, and Goulet, I should say, and now all of a sudden it's Gosselin, but we know it's the right Marguerite. And then we have Louis, Marie, Marguerite, François, Jean, and Joseph. They have six beasts, six cows, probably six beef, and 15 arpavala, about 11 to 12 acres of land. They would go on to have 10 children. Louis would marry Marie Marguerite Briot, but he died at 29, leaving no descendants. Marie would marry Robert Pepe and would have four children, all of whom made it to adulthood. She then married Jean Brindou and would have six children, five of whom would make it to adulthood. Marguerite would pass away at age 34, leaving no descendants. Françoise would marry Henri de Lenny and would have 15 children, eight of whom would survive, seven who would leave descendants. Marguerite would marry Pierre Gueyou and would have nine children eight of whom would make it to adulthood. Jean would pass away at age 20. Joseph, we do not know any more information about. Marie would marry Jean-Baptiste Lefebvre and would have 10 children, all of whom made it to adulthood. Louise would die at age 10. And Pierre would marry Marc Marcou and would have six children, four of whom would make it. He then married Marie Drouet and would have seven more children, four of whom would make it. In the 1681 census, we find Jean in, as a Charon, 55 years of age, Marguerite, 54, their children, Louis, Jean, Joseph, Marie, Pierre. Marie Chapacou is a servante, a 16-year-old girl, and they have two guns, 13 batacon, which is about 13 goats or any kind of horned cattle, and they have about 40 Arfamala, which is about 34 acres of land. It would pass away first. In January of 1703, she was 75 years of age. 
she and Zhao were married an astonishing 48 years. She would leave an equally astonishing number of descendants by 1729, 329. Amazing. Zhao would live on and would die in 1717 at the incredible age of 90. These are really strong people. And so ends episode 88. Mount Gaudiet lives an extraordinary life. I mean, to make it to 75 is just amazing during that time. And also to be married for 48 years. She left us with 329 descendants as of 1729 and just lived this incredible life and was able to truly make a difference. And that's one of the reasons why I'm speaking to you today, because as one of her descendants, just amazing, I descend through Melgorit and, you know, through the lines, through the lines, through the lines. And just amazing, her influence is still being felt. So I want to say a thank you to my grandmama. Merci et je t'aime, grandmama Melgorit. And we are blessed to have had her come to our shores and contribute and be a helpmate to her, her wonderful Jean, who lived to be 90. Just incredible family. So I'm very, very proud to call her one of mine. And uh, can't wait to see who's also related to me as well in the comments below. Let me know. And I also want to say thank you to my patrons, supporters, and subscribers. You are all amazing to have. Some of you have been with me since day one. So thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And with that being said, I will see you on episode 89 of Le Fier Marguerite. Until then, au revoir.